Working Interferences is intended for mature audiences. Since the hosts never grew up, someone needs to be the adult. Welcome to Working Interferences with Lance and Holly, the dental advice podcast for the average dentist. Here is Lance and Holly. Well, we're back. Well, welcome we, back. We are actually, we're actually doing this. Are you guys, it's not, a, it's not 2024. Are you, <laughs> are you all shocked? Uh, we, uh, we've had some fun. Um, so last we heard, Doc was in uh, Cabo. No, wait. You're in Puerto Vallarta. That was Puerto Vallarta with, uh, uh, with Bobby and Phil. Yeah. And, and others. And others. That was part of your mastermind group. So, And I do would like to encourage anybody that gets a chance to... Uh, surround, get get together with a group of people to to share things. But be careful who pe- you choose. But it, it needs to not be the dude down the street where you're all thinking the same. You need guys that are gonna bring things to the table. Well, and- one advantage is we're, we were all from different cities, so right. part of it was well, what if we we unlocked the 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 mystery to marketing. Well, I don't want a, the guy four blocks away yeah. from me knowing how to do <laughs> that, too. the street of marketing. So now we're competing with each other. So this way we could all share freely and not worry that the that I was... Not feel threatened. I think there's, there's no threats. And so um, it's it, it's a nice group. We have a mix of people in the group where uh, multi-doctor groups, uh, one's solo, you know, it, it's all the different flavors, but everybody has the same goal in mind, and, and that is to do quality dentistry and be profitable. So, um, it's mastermind groups, I think, are, are, are great. And I'm a we're all part of different ones, so it's not just that, that one. Uh, I got a group that in May I'm all ahead to, to share with and things like that, but um, yeah, mastermind. So, I got to go to the Puerto Vallarta. But I shortened my trip. I, I didn't go there as long. Normally, yeah, it normally it's not in a nice place like Puerto Vallarta. Usually, someone's, it's in someone's hosting town, and but they're always really nice. I mean, mm-hmm. they really try to showcase their town really nice because it's usually somebody's town. Mm-hmm. This time we were like, man, we've all hosted. Um, let's go someplace a little bit more like a vacation. And the the idea was people become a little bit earlier and stay a little bit later and make a vacation out of it. And I would have done the exact same and I would have brought you with me, but we went to Spain. Yeah. And afterwards. I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to, to Puerto Vallarta for three days. And then, well, we would have done like Spain. five days, but then we would have immediately gone to Spain yeah, and it was I, just, I no. just, I don't have time for that. So I flew down uh, Thursday night and I came back Saturday afternoon. And uh, so I really didn't get to see Puerto Vallarta at all. We rented a house and so we didn't go to restaurants or anything. We had someone cooking for us. So when it was time to take a break, we would go upstairs. See, and I don't it, like that. It was actually great. I am not, I, I like, wherever I go, I like to explore. Had I spent three extra days there, we would have been exploring. Yeah, but had you been at a hotel, you would have got out and walked to a restaurant. True. And you would have seen something. I don't True. like staying in a house. Well, everybody else had the extra days, so they got to go see the rest of the town. Yeah. Well, so had we done, played by the rules, it, it would have been, and you would have been with me. So, but still, I had a, it was a beautiful view. I got to see some sunshine in January. Yeah. Oh, in Seattle, we don't get that. So we had to leave. And so then we left for Spain. Yeah, a couple Where they later. have sunshine. Fun fact. Okay, it's it, motherfucking cold. It was there. fucking cold. I had to buy three coats because I thought I was going to die. So, in my mind, hey, it's Spain. It's, it's south. It's the Mediterranean. But then I, it wasn't until I was there that I got curious and I looked at the latitude of Spain. It's the same as Seattle almost. Oh, my land. Maybe, it was between maybe 32 Oregon. And 41 degrees. So my class was in Barcelona. So we went a few days early to go to Madrid. Yes. And so we got a chance to see Madrid for a couple days. And then, you know, I I actually, my first thought, we were going to take a flight from Madrid to Barcelona because it's far enough. And I thought, well, why not take it? I like trains. So we took a train from Madrid to Barcelona. But we started in Madrid. And for those that have never been to Madrid... It's cool. Go. It's a very cool it, it was, city. Um, our daughter had been there, so we she made sure that we had the address for the, the Tiger's Milk. Uh, <laughs> Panther Milk. <laughs> Panther Milk uh, bar. Well, we, we took a cooking class, which was spectacular, at a cooking school there. Well, no. The, when we landed, you said, now grab your shit. We're going oh, to tapas right. tasting. And, and I'm like, what? Uh, I still had jet lag. I th- well, want to take fine. a nap. Everybody's fine. Yeah. Just suck it up, buttercup. So we have to go stand by the metro stop. I'm like, 
okay. And so we did. We found it. And we had a great time. It was so cool. We met some really fun girls from um, Ireland. Ireland. And we ended up going to a pub with them afterwards. And, and then there was a that Spanish, no, the, the Colombian oh, the girl. Vin- but Venezuelan the Venezuelan girl. Yeah. But her boyfriend's not her boyfriend. <laughs> well, you know how you kind of go around a table and, you know, you see everybody coupled up. Like, oh, how long have you guys been together? How long have you been together? You know, we're, we're like 31 years and they're like two years and blah, blah, blah. And I get to this Venezuelan girl and her person. I go, oh, how long have you guys been together? And at the same exact time, he's like, about a month. And she's like, we're not. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, um. So we, we witnessed them having to define the relationship, which apparently isn't. It's not a relationship. Yeah. That's where they ended it on. Yeah. It was more of a, uh, friends with benefits kind of a thing. Yeah. And clearly the American from Texas (laughs) and the Venezuelan have completely different ideas of relationships, which is very true and very common. Yeah. Uh, America, you have to put a label on everything. Uh-huh. And the rest of the world, it's just like... They just don't label. Well, they're like, does this feel good? This is great. Yeah. You know? I'm happy and, right now. Yeah. It, it doesn't... I don't... You don't need to be my person for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. It just needs to have... A, you know, let's have fun. Let's, yeah. And that was much more what she was like. Mm-hmm. And I just... I really liked her. I'm still friends with her on social media. And I'm like... Yeah. I've never seen the boy in any it, of her Anything photos since. <laughs> But it was really cool. So we did this. So Viator is yeah. who you got the tickets to. Yeah, through. that's a great company. If you're traveling internationally, they do great international tours and classes. That, yeah. That, it, that's kind of their group on or their. Well, I learned from you because our last one that we'll get to is I learned because of you about Viator. So we did a tapas tour. So it was like three different pubs. Three or four different pubs that we went to and tasted food and drink from each one that yes. is specific to so Madrid. We had like pork bellies and vermouth. But apparently, vermouth it, in America is huge. In America, we're all the, the craft brews and all these small little d- beers that people are producing. Well, apparently, vermouth in Madrid is all the rage. And we're like, what? I had never thought of vermouth as anything and other than an mixer. ingredient. <laughs> But they, so we had the the pork bellies were awesome. The guy, the guy that, um, our, our guide was from Seattle. Yeah. Which was weird. <laughs> he actually was from Orcas Island. Where Mercer we Island. Were, where I thought he, oh, his family lives in Orcas Island. Yeah. They now. moved up there, but he's from Mercer Island. And Cause I was like, oh, you're adjusted. hoity-toity. Uh, Mercer, Mercer Island's a, a fairly uh, well off uh, Area place. Of Seattle. That's where, um, the dude from Microsoft, uh, Paul Allen had a big old house I was there. Say which one? Yeah, um, so he had a big old that. So you think Microsoft money? You think or Mercer Island and, and such? So anyway, he was a guy tours. He's been he's been living in Madrid for five years because so. he actually has a girlfriend that lives yes. there. Yes, yeah, <laughs> they and they did put a label it. on it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he uh, showed us around. Did and what was so cool was one of the places. Uh, I also like to use Atlas Obscura as a, a website to look for weird, quirky things. And some of the Atlas, Atlas Obscura things to go to were on the tour. Well, he, he took us to off the beaten path stuff. He took us to not the touristy places. Yes, we were in the kind of a more, um, it's the Chambury is the neighborhood. Yeah. And it's kind of where the university is. So it's a little bit more, it's more, it's local. It's, it's more residential, local. Yeah. The, the touristy things are being near the Capitol and right down the main, by the train station, all that kind of stuff that every tourist is going to get to experience. Right. We got to see how people live the real and where stuff. they eat because their food is way better than yeah. the tourist food. And it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. And so we ta- we had the squid is a huge thing. So calamari, I had no idea that calamari, why in the middle of Spain would calamari know, be the it, thing? It's the best fucking calamari I've ever had in my life. Well, because they know how to cook it. Now that <laughs> I know that the right way to cook oh my God, squid, it was, amazing. it was great. Nice and tender. Usually calamari is kind of rubbery. Yeah. This it, stuff was just tender. It's like chicken. Yeah. It just, oh, so good. And it was, um, it, be, it was very popular in Madrid because it was in a very affordable uh, meat to for them to buy. So everywhere we went, calamari was on the menu. On the menu. So, uh, so the next day is when you had your cooking class. That you took me yeah, to. Yeah, that and was. And so we, ma- we learned how to make paella. 
We did. We actually learned how to make it four different ways. Mm-hmm. It was at a, it was at an actual cooking school, mm-hmm. and there were four other cup, three other couples, and we all made a different type of paella, and it was amazing. And, it and was, ours was the calamari one. Ours was the calamari <laughs> one, but it was so fascinating because we got to use the ink from the calamari. We, mm-hmm. I mean, it just was it was a great class. If you like to cook. That's the way to do it. I have a totally different appreciation for paella now because I, usually I'd see it on a restaurant menu and I'm like, yeah, I'll paella. And then they'd try it and it's just dished for you. Yeah. And it, I have no understanding of what I was really eating. Now that I've cooked it, that I now I'm kind of snobby with my, I want it from the center. Yes. <laughs> and from the bottom. From the bottom. And, but it was, and we met some really fun people. In yeah. That a couple from Germany across from yeah. us. And uh, guy was a military guy next to yeah, us. Yeah, he was in everywhere. something island. He was. They were living in an island. They, they, were, they were Canary Islands. Canary Islands. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was just really fun. We got to meet all. I just, I love to travel because you get to meet people. If you mm-hmm. don't travel and meet people, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. I have. I we have friends. If you have pictures of a resort and that's all you've got, you well, suck. That's the thing that I don't understand is <laughs> we have some friends who are very well to do, but the only views from their trip are from an all-inclusive resort. They always stay at an all-inclusive resort. They never explore. And the only people in their pictures Mm -hmm. are them. Yeah. It's like the first season of white Lotus. So it's, they, they're at their resort. That's pretty much it. I don't understand that. Why? why It's fun for them. But why even bother going to another country? That's just go to fountain blue. Yeah. And sit there in Miami and just pretend you're in Which an we like to do as well. I, I, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but, yeah, I am a big advocate of meet the people of where you're at because it just makes your life so much richer. It's And Spain was no exception. I mean, we met. I met the girls from Ireland. We met... Yeah, the other girls from Texas that I met in Barcelona that I'm still friends with. That are yeah, I missed that one because of we'll we'll get there. So that was Saturday afternoon was the because we had the class was at two o'clock and we had to go buy you a coat. Yeah, soon enough freezing to death. So we found an uh, H and M in um, the shopping district of Madrid that um, we. We're able, we then we were taking the the hop on hop off. Every time you're in a city, always do a hop on hop off bus tour because you're going to get an overview of everything in about two hours, and then you know where you want to go back. And to. then you, yeah, then you take some notes and okay, we're going to come back here. So we on the bus. Finally, we saw the H and M, and we're like, let's get a. You need a coat. And so we jumped out. But by the time you got the coat, we're like, we got to take a cab. We're going to miss our class. Yeah. And uh, we were able to get there in time. It was a three hour commitment. Three, yeah, it was. It, it flew by. It was, yeah, it was. It was really fun. It was great. The next day is where you found a, a mark. You, you Holly likes to go to those cheap flea market type uh, marches, and this place was street markets. Uh, we had to double back a few times. We kept getting separated. It was. <laughs> it, it was. It, it, it was like Times Square. Same thing I've ever seen. It in was my like life. Times Square. So you're just shoulder to shoulder. I always laughed at people wearing masks. I'm like, we are touching each other. I'm almost <laughs> grinding <laughs> on face. people. You know, forget the yeah. Uh. So we did that, and then we we just, we found a place with the the jambon the um the museum of ham. Uh, oh yeah, where we had the charcuterie plates, amazing. And I think I got food poisoning from all the ham. I don't think it got so food Iberian poison- ham is. I like, don't think it got food poisoning because I ended up getting sick days later. Uh, you got poisoned with something else. <laughs> all I know is so this is Sunday. My fl- my train to, to leave was Monday morning, and by uh, Sunday midnight, I wake up. But we did get our panther milk. Yeah, we we did find we took a cab we took a cab out to this place this bought pub. It's in the university area, so usually when we were the first night we tried to go there, the line was up and around and over across the square. I mean, it was just huge Literally, line, probably five hour wait. So we're like, you know what? We'll just come back we're tomorrow. We're too old for this. Yeah, we we definitely had way more. I had more gray hair than anybody. I had the only gray hair of anybody there. So we came back the next day right as they opened. We were the only people there. 
I mean, literally, the bartender it was amazing. came out to check, uh, to see he heard noises and realized we were there. And so, but he was very nice. He, he was so cool. He gave us free drinks. He, he gave a couple extra things to 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 compensate. And, and uh, apparently, if you get a, a thing, it's just like humongous glass. Like, did you each want one? I'm like, God, no. This thing's huge. <laughs> Well, so we, we split it. We have alcohol poisoning and we each had our own. Oh, my God. And then he gave us a sidecar of, of what, what ch- chocolate? Chocolate vodka or something. Chocolate tequila. Saying. Yeah, that's what it was. It was and, amazing. Um, yeah. It was amazing. His, um, but again, in the, the milk comes from a stalactite from the ceiling. Yeah, it's very cool. So we, you've got a video. Of the, the soap, go to, was it Globetrotter Grub? Yeah. Is where you people could look, scroll back, and find you with a video of them serving the drink. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, this milk coming from a stalactite. And um, so, but, but since it had just opened, there was zero pe- Nobody was in there. Which was fine because yeah, I'm we were old. the only ones there, and we were just like, "Let me just have my drink." Yeah, just everybody just shush, shush, shush. Yeah, uh, but but the night before leaving, um, I was vomiting and everything food poisoning does uh, several it wasn't times. Food poisoning. He had the flu. Okay, but then the next morning, so the trains. What was your? I don't know. I can't remember if that's the way it always is. But we get to the train station to take our train, and I, I, we were doing a high speed train, so it's the nice, quiet where they serve food and everything. But you have to wait till they announce what, what platform that, yeah. you're you're going to be and at. Everybody, they only give you ten minutes, it, but everybody races to because there's thing. ten minutes. Thank God we had an assigned seat. <laughs> yeah, because had we just been the unwashed masses, it would have been. That sounds really a fucking nightmare with you being sick. It just would oh, yeah. have been the worst. Well, I mean, because every 10 minutes, I'm like, where's, you know, you're standing there watching for the, the, the announcement. I'm like, I, I'll be right back. And I'm running in there, finding a, and then I come back out. Okay, have we got an assignment yet? Nope. And then a few more minutes, I got to go. And I'm running back and forth. Finally, so we sit down. I, mean, I felt bad because they, they had actually nice meal that they served on the train. Yeah. And I didn't touch hardly anything. <laughs> I it did. Was, I did it. It was fine. It was really yummy. So, so we, and then, and that's when you announced to me that you, as much as you love trains, we should have rented a car because yeah. we always rent cars. Yeah. And I, I do prefer and you're having like, a car. Why didn't you rent a car? I'm like, no, cause well, I, I had you, suggested the train to you. That's on me. But I just, I'm like, I said to you, I said, just so you know, in the future, I think I prefer just having yeah. a car. So yeah, it, it had, to, I, I still do it the same way. Whereas the single, because it's only a three hour train ride, which would make it like a four or five hour drive. Right. But because the way we like to explore, the t- car would have been better because we would have pulled over. Well, we missed a lot. Like when we were we were driving through the wine region and I'm like, oh, I would love to have had an opportunity to stop and to look Talk around and meet somebody and you- go to someone's kill room and have them serve me a drink. <laughs> OK, that's a different. Trip. OK, <laughs> but it just, you know, I don't know. I, I much prefer to have a car. Yeah. And now I know. I mean, we've taken trains before, and I really, I don't think even thought, I think most of the time we've taken trains, it's been such a long way. Like when we took a train from uh, Lourdes, and we, was it Lourdes? No, we, we took Toulouse. the train to Toulouse from Paris. From Paris. And that was a long enough. That was a yeah. long train. And should have flown. We should have flown. But, you know, those types of trains, I don't mind as mm-hmm. much because... Unless that is your entire trip, you're doing a road trip. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't want to have to be driving your car the whole time. But yeah. um, for the shorter stints, I definitely would rather have a car. Yeah. So we were able to get into Barcelona. Um, Lance is still sick. I'm still sick. We get our. Luckily, I got a, a Novotel um, in the what was the district in Barcelona that we stayed at? I don't know, but it was right next to your class. So yeah, I, it was across the street. It was perfectly located. It was right next to a Westfield shopping mall. And I remember thinking he better fucking get it together because we came all this way for this class and he is going. Well, and, and I had come with enough time cause we got there Monday class wasn't until Wednesday. It was a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday class. And so we had Tuesday cause you had a cooking class on Tuesday so well, we had enough time in between to, to, but I ended up on Tuesday saying, and for whatever reason, that trip, I just never, I've still had jet lag. And so I was up all night long and then sleeping during the day. And 
And I finally, I'm like, you got to take this class. I'd hate to be in the class and have to go take a shit in the middle of it. So I just said, you go, I'll just stay here. And I had a great time. And you did. I did. I met some girls from Texas and they're planning a trip to Greece. So I was helping them with their trip to Greece and they had just come back from Iceland and they were, I was telling them that I really wanted to go. So they were giving me all their notes on Iceland and now we're still friends and it's, um, but it was a great cooking class because it was in someone's home. This one was oh, in somebody's home, and um, his wife basically was his sous chef, and um, he did. But this uh, one, you actually had to cut your your we had ingredients. To make everything. The one in Madrid, they they did us a favor, and all the everything was already pre measured. You just had to t- dump the little bowl of your salt and right. dump the garlic and. Um, so that was convenient, but you, I think, got well, a more part authentic. Part of it is the one in Madrid was an all you could drink paella class so mm-hmm. there was lots of wine flowing that you could drink and this one was we had we made sangria we made appetizers we made the paella and then we sat down as a family meal and um, did you only make one type of paella yeah okay and it was one one ma- massive pan okay and it was bigger than the pan that we had yeah Okay. So those that don't do paella, paella's got a specific pan that, of course, we had to buy one. We did. And fun fact, um, it cost $17 in Madrid, and it cost $197 on Amazon. Yeah. So (laughs) when you're It might be worth the flight to Madrid. When you're in a country and they have a tool, go to the grocery store, because their grocery stores carry all everything so in madrid in barcelona where we were we were staying right across the street from this mall well in the mall quite often in france at least and apparently in at least barcelona uh the mall is also going to be attached to a grocery store like in in contretemps in in um in paris there's an ocean it's like a four-story grocery store in the mall well, it's a little bit nicer than the grocery stores that we have here. But it's kind of like a Walmart. It's like Walmart slash Fred Meyer is yeah. uh, what we have here, which is kind of the Kroger brand. In Probably America. more like a Fred Meyer. So, in, in the, But it's a multi-level. Upstairs is where your luggage and your cookware is. Downstairs is where the, the food was. Right. But, I mean, there's also an electronics department. You could buy a TV as well, well it's as... It's like a Walmart. Yeah. I mean, it, but it's nice, and but you can buy everything there. So we actually went over there and bought a pan, a paella pan. Mm-hmm. But because that's where... And vermouth. Uh, and vermouth. And that's beca- but because that's An where everybody who lives there shops at it. Mm-hmm. It's just their grocery store. Mm-hmm. The prices aren't yeah, inflated. It's, yeah, it's all basic fees not yeah it's not tourist fees and so but we always do that we always go to the grocery store when we uh, just a regular grocery store no matter where we're traveling well partly because whenever i travel i like to buy a bar of soap and shampoo and razors and shaving cream and and everything so we're always going to have to go to the grocery store to get these things because i they're always going to have a slightly different smell and things and so now every time i ever smell that again it's going to remind me of that trip and so um, we definitely had to go in there. And I'll usually buy a bar of chocolate, too. So, But, yeah, so that it was pretty awesome. And then um, so we had the class and you were getting better. Mm-hmm. And then the next day you started your Started course. my class and I, I felt fine by then. It was but a very th- cool course. Tuesday afternoon, I was feeling just fine. I'm like, sweet. I'm going to be I'm going to feel great. And we're going to take my class. So I was there to take a Zygoma class. Um We've been doing a lot of marketing. Our practice is focused on rehabilitation and arches of implants. Still a general dental practice. We do cleanings and fillings and regular stuff, but our marketing efforts are specific towards implant rehabilitation. Well, if you if you market for that, you're going to get everybody, including people who've been wearing dentures for decades. And if someone's been wearing dentures for decades, they really have an atrophic bone, uh, quite often atrophic maxilla. And what are you going to do? If they don't have any bone, well, yeah, you could do uh, sinus lifts and bone grafts and do things, but now you're you're complicating the tri- the, the treatment even more. You're um, you're adding time because, like, if you do a sinus la- lateral sinus lift, that's nine months of healing before you can put things in. Patients don't want to wait that long. And the guy that was my partner that shared a table with me and and, and a cadaver head with me, he was a, a I guess a fairly well known oral surgeon in Virginia. Because uh, they got a picture of of me and him that they put on their social media, 
And then someone else said, "Hey, Lance, you're you're hanging out with the uh, royalty of Virginia, of, of I don't know, Roanoke, Richmond. I'm not sure where, what city. Super nice guy, but he and he said that he was taking the class because he he said that he was had been arrogantly assuming that I can just graft. And he goes, but truthfully, if I can place a, a zygoma implant, um, it's better for the patient. And and the, after the I took a class, I, I totally agree that I would I would much rather place a zygoma um, implant than do a sinus lift. Uh, even though sinus lifts are very predictable and probably the most successful grafting procedure that they that we do, um, I think a zygoma is a better thing. However, so my class was uh, anatomically driven. Um, you're using the person's anatomy to decide this is where I'm going to place the implant. There's a lot of visualization. Now, I'm a big guided surgery guy just in general. So for me to not use a surgical guide and and wing it um, was a little odd. So, But then I would come back and explain to you. So, yeah, we're taking this and we're, I reflected the tissue to the floor of the orbit. So the eyeball is right there. Um, the you have to reflect in order with a zygoma implant, you have to go through the zygoma and all the way out the other side because you need to have bicortical stabilization. If you only go through the cortical bone in the front, but not in the back, you're not as stable. Well, the problem is to make sure that you go out the other side, you have to see it. So I'm reflecting all the way past their eyeball. But also if you miss your trajectory, you're, into the eyeball. So he actually, in one of the photos, uh, he described or showed this case where, yeah, they missed. And, well, they didn't miss. They made it into the orbit. So they're right there with the eyeball. It's a big freaking mess. So I come back and I explain all this to you. And you're just looking at me going, oh, no, we're not doing this. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yep. We flew all this way to learn, and now we're going to say, oh, no. Nope. nope, we don't. We didn't know what we didn't know until we knew it. <laughs> So the, the nice thing, we basically had two days of hands-on on these models. And then on the third day, I got to go to the University of Barcelona. But fun fact, that's when I got the stomach flu. Yeah. No, you got the stomach flu the day before because the, the cocktail party that, that oh, that's right, Thursday, I missed it. you skipped because same you didn't want to be at a cocktail party and then have to go shit. So... I throw up went or solo. <laughs> so, and, and then he kept waiting. We we're going to have dinner together. Um, so the, the cocktail party was like six to eight, six 30 to eight 30 or something like that. So we took this bus and it was really cool bus that drew went up the zigzagged all the way up this mountain. And so there's this restaurant, um, that has a great view and you can see the Sagrita Familia across the way. It was an awesome view and everything. So we all took a bus up there and I thought <clears throat> they would take me back. Well, you weren't the only one that thought that they would there take me back. There were only two others. Everybody else made dinner plans or something and took off. And so finally, I'm waiting for um, them to take us home. Finally, they're looking at me like, so when are you going to leave? Because <laughs> <laughs> at 8.30, I, I was like, oh, I'm almost done. Uh, I'll, I'll come back for dinner. Finally, at, then at 9, I'm like, oh, they're still here. I don't see a bus yet. And finally at 9.30, I'm like, I guess I'm taking a cab. And so I took a cab. By the time I got back, it was about 11 or 11.30. You were asleep. I was asleep. I was done. <laughs> I didn't even give a shit. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll eat. We had some, we bought some cookies over at the grocery store the day before. So I'm like, well, munch on these. And then, uh, yeah. so I, I really should, just should have assumed it was getting a ride there, but not Well, back. but. In most cases, that's not the case. Yeah, most of the time, whenever we've gone to places, they provide the... the Especially when they bus you there. Yeah, if they just said, look, here's the address, and meet us there, yeah, then I the, would have absolutely assumed, okay, I'm... On, you're on your own. Yeah, I'll get there. Uh, it was it was a really cool formal summer. I got a pl big plaque with my name on it that I took this course. Um, the next morning, it was really cool to take a class in a university that's older than my country. Uh, super and, old. But it was a, it was very cool. It was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful play. Yeah. Um, and then uh, so it was a cadaver surgery. So and because 
my oral surgeon partner and I, we, we got done fairly quickly. She's like, okay, I'm going to show you this. Hey, look, this is how, this is where the buckle fat pad is. This is how you dissect it. And this is, a, so sometimes, you know, this is when you would want to use this. And then I'm like, wow, I hope I never have to do this. <laughs> but what was the course that you took? And it was, who was the director? So uh, Dr. Aparicio in Barcelona is one of the first people to do zygoma. Super in- nice man. Super. We met him Super at in, Mykonos yep, in Greece. when we were in Greece taking this implant symposium. He was one of the presenters. Very humble, very kind. Uh, very, super very cool guy. Kind. So we were hanging out on the bus because we took the bus into downtown Mykonos from the resort. Yeah. And he was with us. And then finally, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take your course. And I think I registered for his course yeah, right sitting the next bus. to him on, on the Internet. Um, so I got a chance to hang with him in, in Barcelona. Yeah. Really nice man. Very and, smart. Very well, and, and smart. absolutely worth the money to learn because I learned the anatomy of it. I bought his book to learn more. Well, I, I, you don't know what you don't know until you know it mm-hmm. is a thing that I live by because I, I don't like arrogance of, oh, I already know that. Well, no, you don't because you've never done it before. And j- an implant is not an implant is not an implant. And well, not just that. Uh, I'm a big proponent of keep taking classes because you may have learned it this way. Now here's a different way or here's more information that you didn't get presented. Um, The more, you know, the better you are Uh, or you take the class and you realize, Oh, I'm never doing it. Well, if it was a $5,000 tuition to avoid a hundred thousand dollar lawsuit. Yeah. Worth worth the money. Worth it. (laughs) So now you know what cases to avoid because now you know what, could happen that you might not have even thought about being a problem or a right. complication. I mean, yeah, totally worth every penny. Because I knew zygomas were going to be near the eyeball, but I didn't realize how, how really close you could get. Just thinking about it gives me so much anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty fairly certain that um, I'm not going to hit an eyeball. Yeah. Well, we're going to definitely steer away from that. <laughs> That's... <laughs> so... Um, Absolutely. It was a great class. Uh, he doesn't offer the class that often. Um, so, Well, and you have to make sure that it's the hands-on and not the... Yeah, there was a class he... he there was one, it was, um, I think NYU had invited him in to, to, take a, to present, but it was, it was just models only. Yeah. And, and uh, no matter how awesome these models are, they're still plastic. And so... It doesn't. It just feels different. Well, it also is never going to respond the same way as real bone. What was cool was on Thursday, the plastic model that I used to do my case was a replica of the cadaver that I did on Friday. So the bone anatomy that's everybody's got different nuances and their sinuses are big or small or whatever. I'd already done the case because part of the technique that this class was, if you're going to do these zygomas, You can't just eyeball things, even though this is an eyeball technique. You submit the CBCT SEL files to them. They'll print the model for you. So you should do one the night before or before you actually do your surgery. So you will already know this person's anatomy. And um, so I already knew their anatomy because I had done it the day before. Yeah. And um, it was a great class. You you were you loved that class. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everybody guess. in it was in it for the right reason. Not because they're trying to one up somebody, but everybody was in there for everybody to learn. It was a little, a little interesting. I was one of two, three, uh, dentists. Everybody else were periodontists or oral surgeons. The guy from Tel Aviv was an oral surgeon. Um, there were, there were only a couple Americans. Uh, there, there was three people from Belgium, two Australians. um, where else? A uh, guy from Austria, super funny. Um, yeah, it, it was just, it's fun to have an international group to hang with because then you get to, you get turned on. Oh, maybe I should go to, I'm going to, we should go to Austria and see that guy. And, and he, so when we started following each other on social media, it's because we're sharing cases and things. Well, so. Yeah. And it, it never hurts to have some good connections in your back pocket. Right. And um, it just if you ever run into a situation and you have a connection with somebody, you can ask a question freely and not feel like you're invading or asking inappropriately. And most of these guys, 
there isn't an inappropriate crime. They are like, they're, that's their life mission is to help everybody do better. Well, the nice thing about a class like this, this is an uh, upper level class. So you're not going to get beginner questions. Right. You're not going to get somebody asking. Uh, about you, implant style. Just or... implants in, in general. That becomes less critical. Um, Strawman was the main sponsor, but it really was Southern implants out of South Africa. Like they make them for, they, they label that's like they, it's the same implant. They're the manufacturer. They manufacture it, but they have different stickers for who is. So anyway, the guy that the implant rep that was, was there, he was from Pretoria, South Africa. So then of course he's like, Oh, you gotta come on down and check us out. Sold. And and, uh, so now we're already planning. Okay. So if we're going to go to South Africa for this quotes implant, thing um what safari do you want to do let's go to kruger national park and we'll go <laughs> so because we're not going to rent a car <laughs> no actually we would not for us to drive yeah if you're going to go through kruger national you have to drive we need someone who can drive and change the tire at the same time <laughs> i'm not doing that we did fine Fred changed the tire and oh my I God, Fred thought he was going to die. Well, cause <laughs> the day before, so those who don't know, I visited a friend that was in Africa, uh, in 2012 and, uh, we were driving through this national park and, um, the national parks there are way more wild than America. And so we pull over because there were a whole bunch of lions, uh, kind of hanging out underneath the tree. So we're just sitting there and then there were th- four females and two males and then across uh, the hill was another male and they were roaring at each other and then this lion walked into the area so at one point we had lions around our car roaring and stuff so the week then drove on the next day we came through and and fred got a had a flat tire so we pull over and so we had bought some chips r.i.p fred r.i.p so i'm so i started eating eating potato chips because i'm hungry and and first i mean there's what could i do other than just stand there so i'm standing there and we realize hey this is where all the lions were yesterday so we know lions live in the area because there were so many of them just 24 hours previous the thing about it is lions their color of their coat is the same as the grass that they you even if it was 10 feet from you you wouldn't see them and so Fred then comes out after he had changed the tire, was undoing something. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, looking for lions. <laughs> and he's like, eating potato chips. And I'm like, well, that doesn't stop me from looking for the lions. Just so everybody knows, Fred is my favorite. Fred's awesome. <laughs> I, we have known Fred for 100 years, and he's my favorite. Uh, so I, I think I did a good job because I didn't see any lions. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Fred. Anyways, back to Barcelona. So, yeah, so if we go to South Africa, we're we're renting a car yes. so we can drive through Kruger or I any of the others. We should get a driver to drive us well, through. Then it's going to cost money. Okay, some things are worth money because <laughs> I'm not fucking changing the tire. So that's, that's that's true. If we get a flat, we're just going to drive on the rim. Until <laughs> we get somewhere safe. It's not happening on my watch. A hundred yard, hundred miles later on a rim. <laughs> Yeah, that totally yeah, we is. might want a driver. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Barcelona, um, very well put together. I was in this this building that looked like a freaking gherkin. Uh, what was the galleries of... I really should look this up. The one that looks like a big penis? I said gherkin. Uh, that's oh. a pickle, but that's... It looked like a same, big penis sticking out of the wall. Of <laughs> out of the floor. Uh, what's interesting, the... Um, the outside of it looked like it was like missing windows, but at night when they light up and have their little light show, it's actually really, really cool. It's very pretty. It's also on my glow trotter grub. So feel free to take a look at that. Um, but it was in the coolest building other than the familia or whatever the fuck it's called. That big church. Sagrida familia. So yeah. So it was, uh, we also discovered in Barcelona that Lance and I would lose Fun fact, the amazing race, if we were in the amazing race, because <laughs> our attention to detail failed terribly. But, yeah. 
Okay, so the the building, the the, the shopping mall was the Westfield Glories. Yeah, Tory Glories. Tora Glories. I guess I think Tora means tower. Glories Tower. Looks like a big old freaking gherkin, and it lights up at night. It's really cool. and, and It's beautiful. And the Novotel that we stayed at was across the street. Yep. Always and stayed at Novotel. Sto- Novotel. So the Accor Hotels, they have different tiers depending on budgets and expectations. So bottom level is was the Formula One. I don't think they call them Formula One anymore. And then oh. they had a tap hotel. I like a tap. Now they call it Ebus Styles yes. because Ebus was above them. And so you have Ebus Basic and Ebus Styles. And then you have Mercure Hotel. I love Mercure. So we stayed at Strasbourg yeah. and Mercure. And then above Mercure Hotel is going to be your Novotel. And then above that is a Sofitel. Yep. I love them all. All of them Best are... Best breakfasts in, in Europe, period. Yeah. So Always have a great breakfast. When in doubt, if you're looking for a hotel and you see a whole bunch and one of them is a, an Accor, an, a, a Me, Ebus, a, a Mercure, or a Novotel, stay Same there. family. You're, you're going it's to... It's always going to be great. It's going to be clean. It's going to be well-maintained. It's going to be affordable. They're, they're big on making yeah, things... Yeah, but it's not going to be foofy, but you're going to have everything you possibly need mm-hmm. and a great breakfast. And it's generally in a safe location... Mm-hmm. And it's generally clean. The ones that wouldn't be. So the Formula One brand was designed to be outside of town, not in town. Yeah. So you're because it's for the business traveler that's pulling over that may have missed their flight and they're driving along uh, the road and they're getting tired and they still have to drive around the mountain. So they need to just pull over and and get a room. And and you can often get uh, you put like it's like an ATM. You put your credit card in there and it spits out a code. There's no keys or anything. You type it all in, go to your room, sleep, get back up, go and, and move. So that's the only level where it's not going to be necessarily in a good part of town because it's usually not in the town. But we also did a hop on hop off bus tour there. And that was a spectacular one in Barcelona. You didn't like my first choice. Because we took the red line, but the blue line is the one that took went to the um, the place where we would have failed the Amazing Race. Yeah. So our daughter had gone to Barcelona in, like eight years ago. And so had Clint. Well, so our daughter, Brianna, had gone to, um, what's the Park Guell. Yeah. And uh, she took a picture and she posed in a certain way under this, this place. And she posted it on social media. And Clint was coming for a ICOI conference that, that started the day after she had been there. So he saw the picture. So then the next day he went and found the same post and, and or a similar one and sat in near it and, did, and po- posed like her. So for years we had a picture of, of, of my daughter and my brother 24 hours apart in the same thing. So we decided to add to the collection and we found our way, eventually found this post to take the same picture. The problem was we couldn't find it. And then we passed it and we asked for advice to get to it and they gave us directions and then, and we still couldn't get it. Still couldn't find it. Clearly. We Finally, I was about to give up and, and I was like, this is it. This is it. Yeah. And then we were able to look at the picture and say, okay, there's a, there's a, there's a light behind it. Of course, this is eight years later. So the foliage is different. It's grown and the trees are different. Yeah. So we finally moved down and then found the, found the spot. So now we have a a picture, a collage of four of us in the exact same. But Barcelona is pretty spectacular. That is a place that we could have spent a little bit more time there. Yeah. And we went to Barcelona FC and we went to Madrid FC. Both cities. We found the soccer stadium, football stadium. Which is pretty cool, and it's really fun to watch people because it's... They're so passionate. They're so passionate. They're so excited. Yeah. I, I, it's the kind of the, the excitement's kind of <laughs> lost on me. <laughs> well, I wore a Real Madrid shirt on my first day in my in my class. Oh, yeah. Um, they're FC Barcelona people, so they gave me some shit. So then I bought an FC Barcelona jacket to and wear they, the next day. And they appreciate it. And I said, is this effort. acceptable? And they said, yes, you can stay. <laughs> but yeah, so that was pretty much our trip to Spain and doing zygomas. And I think if you're doing implants, you should at least understand zygomas because you may look at an area going, yeah, I could probably try to graft this to do, do an implant. If you're doing rehabilitation, arches and such, at least understand it. Maybe not do it, maybe refer, but you need to know how to refer and why and, and when to, when to say no. And I think this is a good class to to learn that. Aparicio is 
he's the the master. He's he wrote the book. So he literally, I mean, literally wrote the book. Um, super nice guy. You'll you'll never never go wrong with that. So on that, we should probably we usually finish with a song. You think? Uh, is there any song that we heard while we were over there that makes you think of Barcelona or or Spain? Just like flamenco music. So oh, that's right. We did do uh, in Madrid. Yeah, we, we, went, to we went to a flamenco show. Yeah. And um, it was really kind of cool and intense all at the same time. So I'll and probably put some flamenco music on, but they'll probably just turn it off right yeah, once probably. they start. <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing it anyway. So enjoy this flamenco music. <laughs> Thank you. 